Hello and welcome to this second example of where we can apply first order differential equations in engineering applications. And again, if you haven't been watching our previous videos, it's worth going back to watch those videos where we introduce and explain how to solve first order differential equations. But in this video, we're going to jump straight in. So it's worth having watched those videos first if you haven't done already. Let's suppose we have this electronic circuit here. It's made up of a resistor and an inductor. And let's say that we're told that the current I in our circuit can be expressed using this differential equation, Ri plus L di by dt is equal to zero. So again, um, what we can say by looking at this particular equation um, picking on this particular differential term, say, di by dt. Um, in our previous videos, we've referred to things in terms of things like y and x. Um, so don't be alarmed that we're talking about i's and t's now. Um, but you can see that dy by dx, for example, is, our, is equivalent to di by dt. So rather than talking about things in terms of y, we're now talking about things in terms of i. And rather than x, uh, we have t. But our method still stays the same. In our function as well, we have uh, the term R, and R represents the resistance in our circuit, and L represents the inductance in our circuit. We're not going to go too much into electrical theory in this video, um, because this is a maths video at the end of the day. But what we'll have to do is, first of all, rearrange our formula and to begin with, we want to try to get the di by dt term by itself on the left-hand side of the equation. And so to do this, we'll subtract ri from both sides. So we'll have l di by dt is equal to minus ri. And then we'll divide both sides by l. And so we have di by dt is equal to minus ri over l. So referring back to our previous videos for a second, what we have here is a function in the form dy by dx is equal to a function in terms of y. Now remember we're talking about i's and t's, not y's and x's, but hopefully you can see that uh, we have something equivalent here because i, which would have been y in our, in our previous formulations, is... is uh, in, in terms of i on the right hand side as well. And so what we want to do is first of all rearrange this equation as we've done in previous formulations of this type and we're going to rearrange it so that dt is by itself on the left hand side uh, before we can integrate. And so the easiest way to think about doing this is to flip both fractions. We have a fraction on the left-hand side and a fraction on the, on the right-hand side. And so we can invert both of those fractions. Um, and we have something like this. dt by di is equal to minus L over Ri. And then we can multiply both sides by di. So we have this dt is equal to minus L over Ri times di. So now we can integrate both sides. And what we find here is we're integrating dt. Well, that's the same as integrating 1 dt, as it were. And so really we're integrating 1 with respect to t. And on the right-hand side, we're integrating uh, minus L over Ri with respect to i, di on the end there. So on the left-hand side, when we integrate 1 with respect to t, we end up with t. And on the right-hand side, when we integrate minus L over Ri with respect to i, we end up with minus L over R times the natural logarithm of i. Uh, we've seen that particular integration in some of our previous videos, but you can, you can find similar by looking at a standard table of integrals as well. And then finally, not forgetting to add the plus C on the end, our unknown constant plus C, because we've performed an indefinite integration here. We'll have that unknown constant on the end. So here we have um, an expression T equals. Um, we were asked in the question uh, to find a solution 
for i equals and so some rearrangements required here so we see we have we don't have an, an i term we have a log i term here we can rearrange our equation so it looks something like this um, log i is equal to minus rt over l plus c we've done that by multiplying both sides by r dividing both sides by uh, minus l with this constant here algebraically really we should be subtracting c from both sides we'd end up with minus c but this is an unknown constant if c turns out to be a negative value we'll find that out in the evaluation that we'll see in just a second but just um, by standard we'll just leave that as plus c um, and so now we have ln i, the natural logarithm of i, is equal to minus rt over l plus c. And finally, we can find i by uh, finding e to the power of each side of our, of our formula, or, or raising um, e to the power of, of our left and right-hand side, respectively. So we have e to the power of the natural log of i. Well, the exponential constant and uh, our natural logarithm uh, we can think of as cancelling one another out as it were and so we're just going to be left with i on the left hand side and on the right hand side we now have e raised to the power of minus rt over l plus c so what we have here is our general solution and to get to our particular solution we have to revisit the additional information that we were given at the start we were told that uh, when t equals zero, we have an initial current i, which is just capital I, uh, a constant. And this is going to be our initial current because it's at t equals zero. It's, it's when uh, time is zero. And so when we substitute these into our equation, what we're going to have is something that looks like this. We have now i, capital I, is equal to e to the power of minus r times 0 over l plus c. Well, all of that r times 0 uh, over l term is just going to become 0. And so we're left with e to the power c. And so what we can do is now take the natural logarithm of both sides to find that c is equal to the natural logarithm of i. Again, the natural logarithm of um, the exponential there cancelling one another out to leave us with c and the natural logarithm of i on the other side of our equation. And so finally we can return to our general solution. Uh, now we know the value of c so rather than saying um, i equals e to the power minus rt over l plus c we can instead say that i is equal to e to the power of minus rt over l plus the natural logarithm of i. That's all part of the power there. And what we can do is we can use one of our laws of indices to simplify this just a little bit because uh, rather than saying uh, e to the power minus rt over l plus log of i all as one term, we can break this down into two terms and say that that's the same as e to the power of minus rt over l multiplied by e to the power of the natural logarithm of i. And again, remembering that the exponential uh, raised to the natural logarithm cancel one another, as it were, we're left with just i by itself there. And so we have i is equal to e to the power of minus rt over l multiplied by i. And that simplifies a little bit, uh, or we can at least tidy it up, to say that that's i e to the power minus r t over l. So we've purposely avoided too much electrical theory in this particular video, but one thing that might be worth noticing here is that this solution that we've ended up here, this is our particular solution, and it's in the form of a decay curve. And by substituting some different values in, if we know the resistance, the inductance, and the initial current, we'll find that this circuit has a characteristic that looks something like this, where we see that initial current decays to a value of zero over time. So I hope you found this video useful. This has been the second example of where we can apply first order differential equations 
to some more uh, contextual examples in engineering.